Hey everyone, and welcome to Tony for 3AM Challenge. Uh, I mean Tony for you. When we learn about angels and demons, spiritual beings, and regional folklore, we usually read about them and laugh at how silly people could have been in those old times. I mean, small winged creatures that steal children or one-legged giants that stomp on passerbys is just insane, right? Who could have possibly believed in such things? Well, if there's one thing that's obvious about humans, it's that no matter how much scientific advancement we go through, we all want to believe in something magical. It was the same then, and believe it or not, might be more fantastical now than ever before. Now seen as urban legends and regional folktales, these cryptids and strange happenings have become so popular that they've found themselves in all kinds of media, including Shin Megami Tensei and Persona. So let's take some time to talk about these strange creatures from across the globe, and learn what we can about their history and lore. Without any further ado, let's discuss the urban legends and cryptids of Shin Megami Tensei. This video was made possible by the great people over at my Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Also, I have a Discord, so if you want to come chat with me and other wannabe theologists, come join and hang out. Starting off with one of the most popular demons in the series, fan favorite Mothman. This little guy has captured the hearts of many a Shin Megami Tensei enjoyer, and I gotta say, I love him too. However, the urban legend he's based on is quite the departure. The earliest accounts of the Mothman can be traced to November 15th, 1966. Two young couples from Point Pleasant, West Virginia reported to a local police department that they had seen an immensely large white creature whose eyes glowed a bright red. The entity was spotted on the side of the road near what was called the TNT area, a site formerly used as a World War II munitions plant, the perfect place for such an urban legend to start. The eyewitness account reported the creature as looking like a slender and muscular man, but standing at about 7 feet tall with strange white wings. Despite getting a good look at the beast, the face could not be made out clearly due to a seemingly hypnotic effect to its glowing eyes. The witnesses recovered from their shock and sped away in their cars, only to be followed by the creature. The being gave chase as far as the city limits, screeching all the way as it followed them. After news got out of the strange happening in the local newspaper, many others started to report similar sightings. Accounts of the beast spread, but they all remained alarmingly similar. A large winged creature whose eyes shined in the dark. Local wildlife biologists explained the strange happenings as mere sightings of the Sandhill Crane, a bird whose description matches the sightings of a local legend. The name Mothman itself is believed to have been inspired by the Batman comics where at the time he faced off against the Killer Moth, though this isn't known for sure. It all seems pretty innocent now until it takes a significant turn for the worse. One year later, the bridge known as the Silver Bridge collapsed, connecting Ohio to West Virginia, Point Pleasant to be exact. Occurring on December 15, 1967, this tragedy caused the deaths of 46 people, with two of the victims never being found. Analysis of the wreckage pointed to the cause being failure of a single eye bar in a suspension chain, a small defect just 0.1 inches deep. Poor maintenance and continually carrying more weight than recommended led to an expedited collapse. Interestingly enough though, in the 1970 book Operation Trojan Horse and the 1975 book The Mothman Prophecies, author John Keel linked the Silver Bridge collapse to the sightings of the Mothman in the area. Despite it being called the Mothman Prophecies, the book has surprisingly little to do with the Mothman, and is far more interested in talking about UFOs and other such conspiracies. Regardless, it placed the Mothman in a new light. Is he a horrifying beast stalking and preying on humanity, or is he a benevolent member of a long forgotten species that tried to warn us of an oncoming tragedy? Either way, to this very day, Point Pleasant is a tourist attraction with the main focus being on the Mothman. They even made a statue of the creature. In Shin Megami Tensei, the Mothman is far less imposing than the legend made him out to be. Not quite the 7 foot tall beast of legend, but rather a small blank faced creature with multicolored wings. His eyes are still a piercing red, and consistently in the series he learns skills that inflict status effects like bind, panic, and petrification, lending to his hypnotic gaze. He is neutral however, so despite his tendency to terrify people, he isn't a bad little guy. A pretty unique take on the Mothman legend, but I would be lying if I didn't say I absolutely love what they did with him. Next up is a significantly less cute and cuddly monster, El Chupacabra. The first sightings of the Chupacabra, whose name means goat sucker, can be traced back to Puerto Rico as recent as 1995. One March morning, local farmers went outside in anticipation of a normal day of work. What they found, however, was eight of their sheep dead, completely drained of blood, each with only three distinct puncture wounds in the chest area. 
Months went by with more and more livestock being slain until one eyewitness finally caught a glimpse of the beast. El Chupacabra was reported around 5 feet tall with wings like a bat, spines covering its back and eyes a bright crimson red. It stands on two feet and from afar could be mistaken for a man, but its sharp claws and deep fangs set it apart as a violent predator, though it never once attacked a human. After a time, the residents of the town of Canovanes were living in terror. Guards were posted outside farms to protect their animals from the butcher, and some even abandoned their home out of fear and misfortune brought upon them from the beast. In just a year, over 2,000 animals had been killed in a similar fashion, leading to a hysteria in the people. Some believed it was the devil himself come to terrorize the local populace. Others believed it to be an American military experiment escaped from the nearby military base, and others still believed it wasn't even native to our planet. Fear got so bad that the mayor of the town named Jose Soto organized a group of around 200 people, including police officers, to ride around in the countryside in a truck hauling a caged goat, all while Jose stood in the back of the truck holding an enormous crucifix. You really can't make this stuff up. Eventually, the panic died down and reports of the monster trickled down, until the early 2000s. Much later, El Chupacabra was at large again, but this time was reported as much more bestial, more akin to a hairless dog standing on all fours. On top of that, corpses of the beast were actually found, and each time they were revealed to actually be wild dogs, coyotes, or other canines infected with a disease known as mange. This disease causes intense itching, rapid hair loss, and can even lead to the skin of the animal darkening and the body appearing much thinner. This revelation led many to believe the case was solved, but others weren't convinced these were the same horrifying goat suckers they saw not more than a decade ago. In Shin Megami Tensei, the chupacabra appears looking pretty much identical to the eyewitness accounts in mid-90s Puerto Rico. A short humanoid with red eyes, claws, and long fangs standing on its side to show their bat-like wings and spines adorning their back. The creature has a small gold band attached to its right leg, which may insinuate the beast is in fact an escaped dog or a still-tagged escaped science experiment. Or maybe it's just an inconsequential detail. Either way, it's a very accurate portrayal. Next up is a being that everyone alive has their interpretation of. The Boogeyman. This creature is seemingly a generic monster that frightens children who don't listen to their parents. But the history of this entity goes back much further than you might expect. The exact origin point of the Boogeyman is almost impossible to pinpoint, but many believe they originate from the 1500s. At the time, belief in fairies and pixies was still popular in the European region, and there was a certain creature that went by the name of Bugbear. These creatures are not malevolent by nature, but have been known to be vindictive if wronged, and specifically were known for frightening children who were disobedient to their parents. Other accounts say the term boogeyman can be traced as far back as the buggy men who were responsible for carrying the dead bodies piling up in the streets of England during the Black Death in the 1300s. These poor individuals were assigned the task of collecting the bodies of those who died of the bubonic plague, rounding them up to be dumped in a mass grave. Due to their close proximity with the violently contagious disease, these people were more often than not incredibly sick themselves, appearing to many as pale, emaciated, almost corpse-like beings. Regardless of the exact origin, the term boogeyman, bugaboo, or other similar variants are ubiquitous across the globe. In South America and parts of Spain, there exists the Sack Man, which is an otherworldly entity that carries a sack which he uses to steal naughty children away. In Germany, there is Der Schwarze Mann, or the Black Man. He is a demonic being that exists in the dark spaces of the home, like under the bed or in your closet. This incarnation of the boogeyman is interesting as it doesn't always require a child to be misbehaving to harm them. I guess it's just Germany being weird with their fairy tales again. In Italy and the Mediterranean, there also exists Luomo Nero, or the Black Man. This entity is a tall man dressed in black from head to toe, wearing a hood to obscure his face. He chases after children who are out late at night or misbehave in the household. This character is also unique, as instead of stealing a child to never be heard from again, the black man kidnaps the child and forces them to live with him for exactly one year, after which they are returned. Why that specific amount of time? I'm not sure exactly. I guess Italians didn't have the heart to tell their kids there existed a supernatural being that would kill you if you didn't eat all your pasta. Seemingly across the globe, there exists a malevolent entity that preys on children who disobey their parental figures. 
And the reason for this could possibly be traced back to the theory of archetypes put forward by one Carl Gustav Jung. Without going too deep into the field of psychology, it's believed that there exists a collective unconscious with which all humans are a part of and inherently understand from birth. Within said collective unconscious is the idea of archetypes, which are a collection of ideas that repeat from across cultures. Examples of such archetypes are the mother, the hero, the trickster, and the devil for individuals, and can even be attributed to concepts such as the creation of the world, the all-knowing and all-seeing God watching over us, and the existence of life after death. These concepts, while they can vary wildly across cultures, have very noticeable similarities regardless. The same can be said for a type of boogeyman. Perhaps there exists an archetypal figure that fulfills our needs to attribute tangible danger to disobedience for children. Sometimes, children can't understand that exploring outside at night is dangerous because of a seemingly infinite amount of reasons. Potentially since the earliest civilizations, there have existed stories of a demon or spirit that would punish children for ill manners and dangerous activity. Or maybe I'm reading too much into this and it's just a story stressed out moms tell their kids who don't eat all their green beans. Who knows? In Shin Megami Tensei, the boogeyman is called Bugaboo, which was another name commonly used for the same creature. Bugaboo is a red and black humanoid imp-like creature wearing a mask adorned with horns. He has tiny wings and a long devil tail coming out of his... diaper. At first, this design seemed strange, but the more I thought about it, the idea of a boogeyman incarnation that isn't exactly evil, but rather another child with much more power seeking out other naughty children to kidnap and play with is especially terrifying. Very early artwork has him as a tall, armored humanoid carrying a large sword, but this design is far less interesting. Bugaboo plays a large role in Shin Megami Tensei's Strange Journey as Jimenez's companion, as they feel a sort of kinship in their feelings of being abused by a system. Without going too deep into spoilers for the game, it's a really humanizing experience for both of them, even if it does ultimately lead them down a path of chaos. Either way, Boogeyman, or Bugaboo, is a profoundly interesting entity with a wholly unique yet surprisingly interesting design. Well, that covers the urban legends of Shin Megami Tensei. Let me know your favorite in the comments down below, and while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I think mine lore-wise is the Boogeyman or Bugaboo, with how deep down the rabbit hole I went into research tying it back to the Jungian archetypes. But design-wise, I love the little Mothman boy, what can I say? Special thanks to Andre Vinicius da Silva Valens, Anton, Big T, Frankie Stone, Goose Kebab, Jim Taylor, Just a Middleman, Matt M, Patty123, Stuart Ash, The Digital Dutchman, The Toaster Messiah, Video Gamer 75, and many more for supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Thanks for watching this local myth and folklore breakdown, and I'll see you in the next Tony for You. Have a good one.